Technology is shaping the strata of our nation, of our world, of our economy, of our politics. We've done in three years that took the Global International Fusion Project 25 years to do. I love looking at some of these really difficult problems and seeing how we in some small way can dive in and help to solve these problems. There is something truly extraordinary about being the first people to know something, to understand something about our physical world that could truly change it and to hold that knowledge in your hand for just one moment before sharing it with the world. I don't know why anyone does anything else. About 10% of the world's population, or 700 million people, have a rich lifestyle. Rich in education, rich in healthcare, rich in housing, rich in transportation. Seven billion people want it. The only thing that can multiply resources is technology. Technology can multiply resources in almost all parts of global GDP. What technology offers the opportunity to do is to bring new economic prosperity, new economic opportunity and jobs to places and people left out. Technology by its nature can be decentralizing. From learning and inspiring each other to the creation of new jobs and opportunities, we believe technology has a huge role to play in contributing to solving some of the world's biggest problems today. The vision that we have that we want to deliver to our users, we want to provide them with a canvas to create and express. We want them to have a window to discover. And we want them to have bridges to connect with each other and with information. And I think the most important thing that we can do as a company is to make sure that we continue to provide them with a product that can achieve all, all these three things. We are biological animals that have evolved over billions of years. We do that by gathering information. We convert that information into knowledge through intelligence. We adapt to our environments and survive and prosper as species. I think AI is just part of the continuum of that where it allows us to gather more information and convert it into better knowledge, better intelligence, so that we can actually thrive and prosper as a species and, and perhaps do better than we do on our own. On the healthcare side, I think there's a revolution coming driven by the combination of our understanding of DNA and proteomics. And these are just some of the areas where AI in particular is gonna help us solve these really significant problems. Technology is applicable in almost all areas. We can, in fact, within five years, create something that makes a 24 seven primary care physician available to every person on the planet. The future for Fabric Nano is simply expanding our tech stack to include more enzymes. Uh, we have a highly generalizable solution and the more partners we can find to help us bring this to market and scale it, the faster we're going to be able to move the needle on this incredibly important challenge. By imaging the whole earth every day, we track changes as they happen across the planet, helping the world undertake a digital transformation as well as sustainability transformation, which are pretty much the two biggest priorities of society today in many ways, and both industry and government. Just like any other problem, you can't manage it if you don't measure it. Satellite imagery is bringing transparency and accountability. We have incredible transparency of what's going on. Countries just won't be able to get away with big scale military operations without everyone knowing all of these things, including human rights violations, including doing what they said they're gonna do. It brings people closer to those events and it counteracts the misinformation. There are two key roles for government. One is to make sure that people across their country, regardless of their background, have the opportunity for modern job creation. And then on the citizenship side, government uh, needs to work with the civic sector, with NGOs like the Blair Institute, to create the space for thoughtful dialogue, for a thoughtful exchange of ideas. One has to be optimistic. Policy can't be skeptical about the future. Policy has to allow for this optimism. We have to look at 10, 15, 20 years, not two, three, and five years. We really need that and we need to encourage it, not be skeptical about it.